Is it possible to be more lucky? That's what we're going to talk about today. I say luck is when opportunity comes along and you're prepared for it. Denzel Washington. Boy, there's a good quote. Today we're going to talk about the book by A.H.Z. Carr, How to Attract Good Luck and Make the Most of It in Your Daily Life. Now, this book isn't about superstition, and I don't believe in luck in the grander sense at all. Like, you can be lucky that you were able to help someone and they ended up being so grateful to you, they left their life fortunes to you. That's kind of lucky. It's not a chance occurrence, right? You can say that people are lucky or people are bad luck. But what I liked about this book is that it talks about how to increase luck by your own actions. And I think that's what the important part of it is. This is not supernatural. And he says it right at the beginning of this book. It's not found in the vapors of moon risings, he says. I think that we can take opportunities and make those opportunities work for us in a very good way. And so what he talks about in this book is that kind of thing. What can we do in order to either improve our chances at having luck or taking advantage of luck when it comes our way? So he says that, first of all, he wants you to understand that chance is, you know, chance versus luck is like an odd. Something happened or turned your way. It's not a calculation. It's not something that you can plan. A volcano hit this island, but not that island kind of thing. Explains it as in this quote, for as soon as human emotions are affected by chance, it has been transformed into luck. So if you have a chance event, what you do and what you respond to it, that is where luck comes along. He says, like if a wind blows a piece of paper right in our path and we ignore it and walk past it, or do we reach down and pick it up and something lucky happens to us? Now we've set these actions in motions. So he says that luck is the effect of our lives coming across a chance event. But can we make ourselves more lucky? Can we bring more opportunities into our life? Now, like I said, I think the thing I liked about this book is he gives a lot of ways to improve opportunities in your life. Book is thick with stories about people and how they had this experience, whether they're real people or not real people. But essentially, th these are sort of experiences of him playing this out, how this works. And I think it's good in that sense. It is also a very dense book. And so we'll cover and talk about a little bit of what he's trying to give you in this. But if you feel that you're not crossing into many opportunities in life, this is a good book to look at to see how you can make those opportunities happen more often. And so he asked the question at the beginning, why are some people unlucky? And he believes that you can create good luck, that you can, again, with luck being your reaction to a chance event, you can create it and make it more powerful, make it more of an opportunity in your life, not again by some sort of supernatural way. And that's what we're going to talk about here. But he says some people are just unlucky because something happens and based on their reactions to it. I know of someone in my life who feels they are very unlucky, that life was very hard on them, that they never had the chances, you know, in life. But if you were to look at this person, they were raised by a very wealthy family. They were given money almost at every drop whenever they needed it. Whenever they got in trouble, there was money and help and assistance and everything to help them with it. And that person never had to dig themselves out of a hole, never had to take an emergency job to help themselves out of a situation. There was always someone there to give them a lending hand, to help them in some sort of way. And you think, gosh, that is awfully lucky to always have someone in your life who's there to be able to pick you up when you need it. So in, in that case, that sometimes when people consider themselves to be not very lucky, they're, they're just looking at life entirely wrong, or they are given opportunities or chances to do something and they squander it. They don't take up that chance. They don't take up what it is. 
And so I think that that lesson of being around that person always taught me, always take those opportunities. Good things don't always knock at your door. And if they do, be ready to say yes to them. Be ready to step out and do that. So when I had the opportunity to go to college, despite the fact that neither of my parents went to college, absolutely, taking that opportunity. When I have seen opportunities in my life to move up or to change jobs, I took them. Even in some cases, it was like, boy, this job is turning south in a hurry. I better take a new job. But in this last chance, all of a sudden, there was this opportunity to take this new job. I stepped out on the ledge. Is that luck or is that looking, being ready for, being prepared for, having the skills for an opportune time to step out on the ledge and take on a new challenge? So why are people lucky? Because we're not responding, he says, successfully to different chances in life. Start changing our response to things because that's what's going to give us luck. If we're someone like that person I talked about who always feels that bad luck follows them wherever they go, they never get things that go their way, everything is really terrible and bad luck, and their life didn't go in any direction they hoped it would, wish I could almost show them a film strip of every amazing thing that happened in their lives, not to shun them, not to put them down, but to show them you have had so many opportunities, so many people who have come through for you. If you could just tilt your life a little bit left or right and take those opportunities on, you would have the life you wanted to have. But, you know, you can't do that, obviously. There's no method for us to do that for other people, and there's no method for us to do it on our own side. You know, that if we had opportunities, I know I've probably had opportunities I didn't take advantage of. And then the thing I wanted didn't come about. You know, thinking about my career is pretty good and that has gone pretty well. But what about my love life? Were there times that I had opportunities to meet new men and I just didn't get there because I was ashamed of my own weight, because I was embarrassed about how terrible I am at meeting men, I, I, you know, something like that, or sticking with someone that I thought was going to be the person I was going to end up with, those opportunities were lost. So while my career side of things are very good and I've taken those opportunities where I could see them, somehow they were more strategic to me, there were other opportunities I had that I just didn't take on and I didn't go after. I also think like even when I was in grade school, we had this opportunity to come up with an experiment to put on the space shuttle. And I sat there for a good solid night or two going, well, what can I invent? Really, everything's been discovered. I remember saying that. Like, I think every, I told my dad even, I think everything in in science has been discovered already. I don't, I can't think of anything new. And my dad, of course, was having none of that. And I gave up after two days. And then all of a sudden I saw the experiments that ended up going up. And was it like, do fish in a fishbowl know which way is up when they're in space? Oh, that was a good idea. Do pea pods grow in the right direction when there's no gravitational energy being in orbit? In sp- oh, yeah, that was a good idea too. So I didn't spend time. I didn't take that opportunity to come up with something. So there are times, even though in some places I'm great, other places I'm terrible. So that's what he's talking about is can we react to these chance situations where we have this opportunity to do something and do something better. He says the first thing is, is our relationships with other people. And he says right out of the bat, if you're a likable person, you will have better luck because people will like to be around you. Opportunities will come your way when someone sees something good in life and saying, I'm involved in this opportunity. Oh, you know who's really likable? That person. I really want that person to have something good come their way. Being likable can increase your luck. But he says overall in this book that he puts these lucky kinds of things into three different, um, I guess, phases. Is that, first of all, attraction, you know, that you attract by basically being likable, these opportunities, where then we recognize an opportunity is right here at our door. 
And then we respond in the most appropriate way to get that opportunity. Again, I did, I remember once I got set up on this date with this guy. He was a really nice guy, but I was so uncomfortable about this sort of arranged date kind of thing. I just said, let's just have a nice meal and talk about Star Wars and other things, and then we can just be done with this. And he's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. It's as uncomfortable as I was, I didn't recognize this as an opportunity to actually be on a date with a really nice guy. To me, this was weird and forced. And so my recognition of this was not there. My response wasn't there. But the attraction was there because someone thought, hey, maybe we should get these two crazy kids together, right? But in the case of this job that I just took, I attracted it by having the right skills. Um, by having people like me in this place, I recognized this as an opportunity and I responded by applying and getting that job. So again, that's where he sort of breaks it up into three places. So he says one thing that attracts us to luck is zest. And zest is really this kind of mm, for life. You know, we're excited. We're going to go after things. We have this healthy, he said, relationship with people. And we have this enthusiasm for life. People who are like that attract more people to them. And attracting more people to you will increase your luck. He, he calls it sometimes unexpected friendliness. That sometimes you just run into someone and build up a friendship on a spur of a moment. Now, nothing came of this, but it was funny. One time my friend and I, her husband was at a conference and we were in Southern Florida. And we were eating at this restaurant and it was pretty packed and there was no tables there. And this man, kind of older than we were, comes up and he goes, you know, there's no tables here. Can I sit with you? And we're like, OK, sure. Which is not our, our way we go. We're, we tend to be both very private people. And so our first inclination would be like, no, weirdo, go away. But I don't know. It was the spirit of the moment. And we said, sure, go ahead. And it turns out he was like the owner of many farms for sugar in Southern Florida. And he told us about all his travels and his experience as a sugar baron and, and all these things. Now, nothing came of it. You know, we never met him again and he didn't leave us his worldly fortune or anything like that. But these luck chance meetings with people, you know, that's really where it comes up. I mean, there was nothing saying that if I were deciding I wanted to move to Southern Florida, I couldn't have written that guy a letter and said, hey, remember when we met you at this restaurant? I really liked what you had to say about the sugar industry. Could I come work for you? Opportunities come out with unexpected, friendly situations, people that we meet, and when we're just nice people and we're fun to be with. So he says zest is that shortcut to luck of enjoying other people, of being with other people. But he says what kills it off is greediness. He calls it gluttons, you know, people who just want every experience and everything for themselves. It's more than just food. It's everything. People who just hoard everything to themselves. That kills that off. Anxiety, people who are so anxious. I mean, I, we could have said, no, you're kind of weird to ask to sit at our table, but we didn't. And he ended up being a really interesting and nice guy. So those types of things fight against us, right? Those types of situations when we're too anxious, when we're too greedy, when we're too something can destroy our opportunities for luck. He says that even sometimes shyness, that we have to break through shyness because these little tiny wins of meeting up with people. You know, I even think about um, my friend got married when uh, two guys at the church always went to these concert events together. And one of the guys couldn't go. And he says, you know what? You go ask a girl to go to this with you. And he didn't really do that before. He wasn't really, I think, someone who asked a lot of girls to do things with him. And on a spur of the moment, at a Vesper service, a Wednesday night service, he asked my friend to go out to this concert with him. They got married. You know, they've been married forever now. So sometimes, even if you're a shy person or it's just not your, your thing, Getting out of that box will help you have better luck. He says two luck can come from fresh ideas. When you're full of zest and full of life 
and you're thinking of the next thing or this thing to do or that things to do, write a book, do a podcast, you know, get out there somehow. When you do these kinds of things, it brings people into your sphere. And the more you bring people into your sphere, fresh ideas, coming out with things, the more luck comes your way. I came about this podcast because I joined somebody's Slack channel who had a podcast and she was so kind and said hi to me. And I thought she was a robot. And I said, okay, Slack robot, hello. And she's like, I'm not a Slack robot. I'm a real person. And we started talking at that point. During the pandemic, she helped me get started up with this podcast. I mean, this chance meeting was, was amazing. And it changed the course of my life. But by having a zest and an energy for life, it changes it. Because part of it, too, was sometimes she goes on vacations. And so she hopes that someone will do some clips so that she can go on vacation and not have to worry about her podcast broadcasting while she's gone. So I ended up doing some clips for her. She gave me feedback. I got better at it. Then she helped me with my own podcast. By having the zest for life where you meet people, by doing things and stepping out on the ledge, like taking this opportunity to do podcast clips, I got something out of it. And now I have something of my own, all because of this chance meeting, this zest for life on both our parts, and going out and doing something. It would have been just easy to say, well, I'm not a podcaster. I can't make clips for you. I don't really know what I'm doing. But instead, I didn't say that. But he says that, again, some threats to this particular luck is, first of all, being an egomaniac. When you get so egomaniacal and I'm great and I'm wonderful, it, it really kills it off. And I think why it kills it off is because you don't take feedback. Because again, Allison gave me feedback. Well, you could do this better. You could do this a little bit better. This is how you can make things better. It made me better. So not only was it me saying, yes, I will do some clips for your podcast, but it was not having an ego about it. Well, I'm really great at this. I don't need your advice. I never would have gotten better at it. But he says, instead of ego, instead of wanting... Which, which is a weakness. He says it's a weakness in a lot of ways. It's a spiritual weakness. It's a social weakness. It is against generosity. It is a, an anti-magnet for people. Instead, what we should do is have generosity. We always offer people more than we get. And by doing that, we will always have those opportunities to have luck. And then he says the next part is that we really have to recognize these opportunities for luck. And that's where I think it's, it's really kind of interesting. Like I said, that person had been given so many opportunities for jobs, for relationships, or to do anything that she really wanted to do with her life. But she never saw them as opportunities. She, I think she saw them as burdens. In that case, we have to go ahead and start recognizing when these chances these random acts come our way. He was saying like about hermits and all that, they've quit life. They live on top of a mountain or, you know, inside of a hill and they give advice and all of that to different people, but they don't really have any hope for themselves. They might be offering great advice to other people, but by being hermits, there's no opportunity for them. And so you have to be able to recognize it you have to, he says, be able to catch the rhythm of chance, which means you can see, I think, once you start seeing lucky things happening in your life, you can see when they happen. Like I said, when I got off that call and I saw that they were going to hire for this position, I, I saw it right there. But you can, as you get more chances in life, you get more experiences in life, suddenly you start recognizing when opportunity has come your way. And, and recognizing that this is a real chance for me. That can happen to you. And so it's important for you to not just have these chances happen to you, but for you to recognize this is an opportunity. This could have an effect on my life. And you won't change your behavior. You won't go reach out and do the thing that you're supposed to do if you don't first see what it is that's supposed to happen your way. There, there was a story I read about in the newspaper where this family had a very sick child and they just wanted their child to get better. That doesn't look like an opportunity for anybody. But instead, this family took a dive in. There was no cure for this disease. 
and they worked for it and they worked on it and they worked with scientists and they looked at the research and they found the cure for this disease by working with the hospital and investigating themselves. These were not medical people. They took something that looked like bad luck, like looked like a bad thing that happened and instead ended up healing a disease that happens to children. It's, it's that time to take the bull by the horns and take that opportunity. He talks about the city versus the farmer and how you live in this beautiful state of grace with nature and it's wonderful and you get to see the joys of nature every day of your life while the city dweller has a different rhythm. Their rhythm is of bustling and business and meeting this chance person at this restaurant. And so their chances are completely and utterly different. There are two different rhythms to each of those lives. You have to be able to pick up on that rhythm, whichever situation you're in, whether you're living in New York City or you're living in a farm in the middle of Minnesota, your life has a rhythm to it. And I think that's important too, that, and this is probably why so many people move out to Los Angeles to become actors, is they sit, see like they're in a school play. I'm pretty good at this. I, I love doing this. And they realize the rhythm of their life, wherever they are right now, is not the kind of rhythm in life to give them the thing that they're looking to do. So sometimes it's not just recognizing the rhythm of life where you are, but sometimes I think it's also recognizing that the rhythm of life where you are is not really what you're seeking. And then he says we just have to be alert. You know, we're, he says we're alert whenever, you know, the weather turns bad, we're going to have a tornado, you know, we're ready for the bad weather and the good weather, but we should also make sure that our eyes are set, that we're ready to see the rhythms of good luck and good chances in our own lives. And we have to be watching for it and even have an alert to know when we've seen the right thing. He says, too, that in the end, we can't despise if some of these changes are small changes, you know, little tiny things. I think that part of the problem when people get out of college, right, they're sitting there and saying, well, I want to be the guy who makes movies or I want to be the woman who is a lawyer to people who need a lawyer. They have some big goal out there. They have some big dream out there. And instead of actually realizing that how they go through their steps is to get these small opportunities. A nonprofit organization asks you to make a video highlighting their fundraiser event. And they're looking for someone who knows YouTube, who can make a video for them. And you're thinking, no, 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 I want to be a director of Hollywood movies. I'm not looking to be a director of nonprofit organization fundraising films. Mm. See, now, did you just miss your chance? Because maybe the person in that fundraiser, person on that board, works for a small film company. Maybe that person has ties. But because you said no to the little thing, the small step, you said no to the big thing, right? And you, you miss big opportunities by saying no to the little opportunities. People sometimes just think, I'm going to move to Los Angeles. I'm going to be a star. I have, I'm the next it person. Not looking at a lot of those people who live out in Los Angeles as successful actors, actresses, directors, got there by small steps. So he warns us about that too. And the other interesting thing is he kind of breaks down, like I said, there's a lot of stories in here, but about Napoleon, that Napoleon was that guy and he came from an okay family. He had an okay education. I mean, you know, you would not have looked at, I, I just got done reading the whole biography of Napoleon. You would not have looked at him and said, oh, this is going to be this big leader of France that changes the entire history of France. But he was a guy who always took opportunities to exchange prisoners, to read about this. There were times that he was at war, but he saw something going wrong at home and he had to get home right away. He was the guy who knew the rhythm of life and knew where he had to be, when he had to be there. So he was that guy who understood that recognition. So we're going to continue talking about this book next time. So my challenge to you is for you 
to start being a better recognizer of chance or opportunity? Can you start paying attention more to the things that are going around in your life? And then the question comes in, if, if there's not really opportunity in life, are you too isolated? Are you not out there with enough people who could increase your chance of luck because luck happens when there's an excitement, a zest, an inner relationship with other people? So I want you right now to evaluate well, the lucky things that are going on in your life right now and see if there aren't some ways to increase those opportunities to happen more. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember, tell a friend. I would love to get this podcast, I guess, into a community where we can start talking about making our lives more productive, better running. And you're always welcome to email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. And remember, our first steps in luck are small steps. <laughs>